Hey everyone, Dan at Ochoco Bushcraft. Well, today I'm out here doing field test number four of my get home slash bug out bag. Uh, this is the final video that I'll be doing on this series. There's actually a total of six videos. Uh, the first video was choosing a pack and knife, which happened to be the uh, SC5 and the uh, 511 Tactical Rush 12, their smallest one. And the second video was a total loadout of all the gear I chose. Past three videos have been field testing that gear, food and water, fire, shelter. What we have not tested yet and what we're gonna test today is tools. Now for tools in my bug out get home bag, I chose the SE5. I chose it for a couple reasons and I've not um, used an SE5 before. This today will be the very first time I have ever used an SE5. I have to admit part of the reason I chose it and I mentioned this at the beginning, some of the things I chose for this bag were things that I had not used before and I wanted to test them. I wanted to venture out a little bit and try some new things. So I chose the SE5 uh, because my get home and bug out bag serves one specific purpose and that's to get to where I'm going as quickly, safely, efficiently as possible. I'm not going to be stopping to do bushcraft. I'm not going to be stopping to fish and, and set traps and things like that and, and do a bunch of carving. I want to get home. If I can get home in one day, I'm going to be home in one day. Right now, for example, here this is a perfect example. I'm 30 miles from home in the location that I am. And I am nowhere near a main road. I think it's probably 20 miles to the nearest main road. So it's about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. If my pickups broke down right now, I'm stuck here for the night. Uh, nobody knows my exact location, general idea, but not exact. I'm going to have to spend the night out here and then start walking tomorrow. So that's what this kit is about. Getting home or getting to my bug out location. Either way, that's where the rest of my gear is. My main gear, my main knives, my main equipment. This is to get me there again quickly, safely, efficiently. So I chose the SE5 because it's heavy. It's quarter inch thick steel. It's built like a tank. Very heavy, very thick. Uh, it's got a glass breaker on the back, which you know what, if I needed to get out, um, maybe I ran off the road and I was trapped and I had to bust out a window, well this glass breaker on the back end comes right to a point, that's what it's designed for. Uh, again, quarter inch steel, very heavy blade for chopping, strong, self-defense, um, it's, it's kind of a do-it-all type knife, it specifically was designed for sear, which is survival evasion rescue and escape so that's what this knife was designed for so i think it's a really good choice i chose silky pocket boy because it is a light uh, very very light compact saw yet has a lot of good reviews on uh, both youtube and amazon so i'm going to find out shortly how this works and the last tool i chose which if you guys have watched my video, this is the one tool I was familiar with, and that is the Leatherman Rebar. Only difference is I chose this model in Coyote Tan, but I've actually done a video review on the Leatherman Rebar. So for that reason, I'm going to put this away and go right to the tools that I have not tested. The Silky Pocket Boy. Um, I've always used my Baco out here doing bushcraft. So this you know, will be first time. And uh, as I said, I've used many in SE. Hungless 2 is one of my favorite. PR4, have not used a 5. These both are going to be first time for me. So I got a lot of scrap wood here, guys. And uh, we're going to go to work, see what we can figure out. Okay, 
I want to move you guys just a little closer so you can get a better view of what I'm doing. Okay. All right. Perfect. I want you guys to be able to see. So, I've got some dead pine here, and I've got some green willow. I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to test out this pocket boy. All right. Let's just assume my vehicles broke down. Well, the overnight low for out here is supposed to be down around 40. I think I'm gonna have to get me a little fire going. Also, that'll put up some smoke, and uh, when I don't, if I don't make it home, people will uh, be able to both smell and and see that. So, got me a piece of firewood here. And we go ahead and try this Essie, I mean this uh, pocket boy out, silky, and see how it works. Getting some firewood for the evening. First cut. Wow. Well, that was quick and easy. <laughs> Nice, very nice. Uh, let's try something a little bigger here. Get rid of these limbs. I remember on the silky, I got a pull on the baco push. I actually just pushed and the blade took a nice little bend, but no damage, so. That was nice to see. All right, let's cut a piece off right here. All righty then. So getting some firewood, cutting some pieces of uh, firewood, not gonna be a problem. Uh, cutting poles this size and probably up for another inch or two more in diameter. Quick and easy work. Uh, that was pretty easy, pretty easy, pretty fast. Not bad at all. Let's, uh, you know what? Let's do one more up here. Let's limb again. Let's do one up here, or actually a couple cuts up here in this bigger section. And uh, then that'll give me something, there's a little damp up in here. Give me something to do some batoning with. We'll try out that SC5 and see how it batons here pretty soon. Let's try this. Nice. Wow, that's really, uh, that's some quick, easy work. That's not bad at all. I have no complaints. Nice. First time silky pocket boy. Thought this wood would be a little bit drier. It's a, it is dry down in the middle, but there's definitely some dampness on the outside. But uh, so for cutting, cutting some dry wood, dead wood for uh, firewood or for poles. If I needed to get up a some kind of a shelter. Uh, Quick and easy work. What I want to try this on, I'm just seeing this blade is, feels like it to me it's a little bit loose. Uh, it is. Okay, that's something actually good to know. 
Now, I don't know if it came that way. Using my SE as a screwdriver. There we go. Okay, that's nice and tight now. A little too tight. Back that off a little. So the SE knife works as a screwdriver. Makeshift screwdriver. What do you know? <laughs> I uh, again, this is the first time I've used the Pocket Boy. Um, I never checked it when I first opened it up, but so I don't know if this little screw right here is something that uh, will come loose from time to time, or if it just happened to come come that way. We'll find out over time. But I'm going to do some more sawn here. I got some green willow, so this went quick and easy through uh, drier pine. I got some green willow, and. I'm going to need a baton to baton with that SE5 anyway. So, oh. Sorry, guys. Well, I could go back and edit that out, <laughs> but I think as mistakes happen, we'll just leave everything as is okay i actually these big old branches caught the uh, tripod that my camera's sitting on and dumped it over sideways again sorry about that guys but uh i don't have the camera equipment to edit everything out so i either got to go back and start this whole video over or ask you guys to put up with a uh few seconds of a blooper. <laughs> Maybe we'll do a, a video someday and call it Ochko Bushcraft Bloopers. All right, let's see how this works on green. As I said, I'm gonna need a baton anyway. Wow, that was nice. That was surprisingly easy. Some, some of the cheaper saws that I've used, when you cut green willow, they just hang up terribly. Um, that buzzed right through that with no problem at all. All right. Need one more cut here for a baton. And that screw is holding now. You know, as I said, I'll, I'll check it over time, but my guess is because of how um, the way the blade was wiggling around that that screw actually came loose. So good to know. Um, also, we found out that the SE5 works for a screwdriver. So <laughs> maybe that's good to know too. Okay, I'm gonna give the Pocket Boy a thumbs up. It's light, it cuts fast and easy. Uh, Two things that I would mainly need to get into my bug out location or home would be firewood and uh, possibly to put up some poles for some kind of an emergency shelter. And, you know, that's very little work, very little effort, fast and easy. Um, learned a lesson about watching this screw for tightness. I'm giving it a thumbs up. I'm happy. So let's try out this SE5. First thing I want to do, let's try a little chopping here. Because one of the purposes of this SE5 would be to take uh, boughs off, say, a fir tree if I needed to do some type of an emergency shelter. Give me, uh, you know, insulation from the ground, insulation from my roof. So this green willow would be comparable to chopping some boughs off a green fir. And that was easy. It definitely, uh, no problem delimbing. Yeah. 
Not at all. That's uh wow, quite the little chopper. You know, like I said, quarter inch thick steel on the back. That's a heavy knife, and you can choke up pretty far back. Yeah. Nice. Do the trick. Uh, what do we got laying here? Let's see. Well, no problem in putting a point on something pretty doggone fast. That's the factory edge. Yeah, <laughs> it's shaved. It's a shaver. All right, one more time. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, definitely, if I needed to delim um, some fur boughs, give me a nice thick layer of insulation under me, some shelter over me if it was going to rain. Ah, very, very impressive little, for a five inch blade, it's so heavy and, and you can choke up, like I said, back here. Um, no problem at all. Amazing little chopper. And I'm not putting hardly any effort into it. I'm not giving any real big wax either. Okay. Let's see how she batons. As I said, I might need a fire. If I had to stay out here tonight, I would want one. Well, that was nice. Very, uh, very good batoner. Nice. Yep. No problem there. So if I needed to baton down, get some smaller stuff, get some kindling. Maybe I want to do a little log cabin to get started. Well, definitely will do the trick. Definitely get me some nice small pieces. Get down to dry centers. So it chops, it batons. Let's take a look at this. And it still shaves just fine. All right. Piece of fat wood, guys. Let's see if it can get me some small shavings. So I got uh, some fine stuff 
you know, it's a bug out situation or a get home situation. I'm not going to mess around a whole bunch out here. Got my lighter, got my windproof, waterproof matches. Give me some small pieces of fat wood. I'll be ready to go. Let's see if you guys can hopefully see that right there. For a big, thick, heavy blade, that's nice. You guys see that? That's not bad at all for a big, thick, heavy blade. Not bad at all. And those little pal of those with uh, just a quick strike of a match. Um, I got my fire going, you know, do a little log cabin with these little sticks. Ton these up a little more. Have a nice pile of the uh, bigger round ones sawed up and um, a lot of dead material laying around. And a lot of limbs, you know, on the trees I can break off like this that are nice and dry so doing its job getting uh, getting fire getting shelter I'm sure this window breaker you know I don't have a wind spare windshield to break out but I'm sure yeah there ain't no problem there that's going to do exactly what it's supposed to do. Yeah, no problem. Also, just adds to the self-defense aspect. Besides your slashing, being able to strike with that end, I mean, that heavy point like that, that's, you know, extreme self-defense. And uh, I'm pleased, guys. I'm very pleased. I uh, very happy. Silky Pocket Boy, SE5, thumbs up. So far, uh, all the tests on uh, the various gear that I chose for the bug out get home bag have gone well. I did discover that the the smaller Uberlieb and fire um, steel or ferro rod. Uh, was a little light on sparks for what I prefer, so I swapped that out for a larger one. Other than that, um, everything has gone fantastic. So the one final touch I will do, and this is, you know, personal preference for me, is I'm going to take my SC5 and send it to uh, Mark at Sagebrush Customs and have him put a 90 degree spine on it, take this... Uh, coating off the back edge here so that I can use it to strike a ferro rod. Worse comes to worse and I don't have my matches and lighter. I could at least, I've got a way to strike a, my ferro rod with the knife and also with the 90 degree spine on here. Um, another way to get tinder, I will be able to make fine shavings, which right now with that coating on there, I cannot do. So that will be the final touch guys so that's it this is the final video i hope you guys have enjoyed it i hope it's given you some ideas of various items that you might like to have in your own bug out get home bag um as i said before when you get a bag and you put it together do what i did get out and test it because along the way i did found find one piece of equipment that uh, did not work for me and swapped it out and if you wait until it's too late and you get out and test that equipment just like perfect example this saw if i had not known and this was a real survival situation and i'm under stress i may have lost that screw and lost my blade so i learned beforehand by testing something to keep an eye out all right guys thanks for watching ochiko bushcraft thanks for supporting this channel and uh stay tuned we'll get some more videos coming your way shortly thank you